What was once the prominent means for gamers to gather around and play games with their friends has deteriorated into a wasteland filled with unfinished, monetized to hell products and digital only experiences. Console gaming now is completely devoid of the soul that it once had. Don't forget man, when you get home from school today, you gotta get on Fortnite and you gotta buy the Seasons Battle Pass. They just added Pregnant Sonic as the new skin! Going to your local video game store used to be a magical experience. You and maybe a group of some of your friends from school would peruse the aisles for hours while your mom shopped next door at the TJ Maxx. Now, many people are opting to buy games online, or even worse, digitally straight from their console storefront. While I understand the convenience of buying games online or even digitally, I am even guilty of it myself sometimes. Still, this has fundamentally changed the way that we play and enjoy our favorite games in the console gaming space almost entirely. Let me take you back to a time that all the Zoomers are currently obsessed with, the mid to late 2000s. Oh boy, isn't this just so Fruitager arrow coded? Here we are during the transition between two of the best generations in gaming, the 6th and 7th generation of consoles. You're in the car, going home from a shopping trip with your mom to the mall. She let you pick out one game from EB Games. Upon entering the store, you immediately gravitated to this brand new game for the Wii console that you had just gotten the previous week for your birthday. This game was nothing like the Mario games that you were familiar with. You're overcome with excitement to get home and pop it in the first console that you were finally able to set up in your own bedroom. Finally. The moment comes, you and your mom arrive home. You've already taken the game out of its wrapper, studied the front and the back of it carefully, read through the entire manual cover to cover. Filled with excitement, you rush upstairs to your room. Turn out the lights. Place your favorite Spider-Man blanket over your window for maximum ambiance. You pop the game in your system. It boots up immediately, no downloads, no day one patch, and then, it begins. Down the hall, your older brother has some of his friends over. They all brought their own PS2 systems and are having a good old fashioned LAN party. Currently, they're in a heated multiplayer match of 007 Nightfire. Then suddenly, his friend Ricky gets a cheap ass deagle shot off on your brother. This sends your brother into a rage, causing him to throw his DualShock 2 onto the ground, scaring your little ass into jumping up and turning on the lights, thus ruining all the ambiance that your Spider-Man blanket was providing. Sadly, this is the reality that modern game companies have robbed us as well as the future generations of gamers of. Today's console gaming landscape is a shell of its former self. Day one patches, game disc only including a fraction of the game that you bought, the astronomical pricing of some games on the second-hand market, and the looming threat of an all-digital future all contribute to the current sharp decline of what was once a hobby full of bliss and entertainment. Now, if you will, please join me in talking about why console gaming has lost its soul. Console gaming was the king, the primary way us gamers consumed our games. Things really only started to change around the middle of last generation with the Xbox One and the PS4. Many gamers during this generation would choose to switch over to a more powerful, customizable and feature rich experience with gaming PCs. Now, while PC gaming has pretty much always been a thing, many anti-consumer practices by console holders as well as the death of quality console exclusives drove more and more gamers to the PC. Not only this, but it was as easy as possible and as cheap as possible to be a PC gamer at this time. You could virtually build a PC for around the same price that's vastly superior in terms of performance to the consoles at this time. Of course, these days the lines between consoles and gaming PCs are being blurred even further. Consoles now are essentially just a more restrictive pre-built gaming PC that you have to use proprietary software and hardware for. While this is the case now, you really are hard pressed to build a similar spec PC for around the same price as current consoles. Nevertheless though, I know several people who during this time and even currently are switching over to PC gaming 
because there's essentially no reason to own a console at this point. Aside from something like the Switch, essentially all you're buying is a less powerful PC that can do a lot less, so many people are not really seeing the value in these consoles anymore. If you're gonna spend any money at all, you might as well get the best thing that you can to play these games on, right? So let's look at some of the reasons why this change has happened with such prevalence. Things like the online pass that expired after a certain amount of time, and the rise of DLC being the means to finish a game, came to prevalence as early as the Xbox 360 and PS3 generation. I can remember it like it was yesterday. Games like the new Assassin's Creed and even stuff like Mass Effect 2 would come with an extra little slip of paper. On this paper was a code for the online pass. This was something that you had to have in order to access a full entire section of the game. Gone were the days of multiplayer being an option you could just select from the main menu free of charge. No, no, you had to have that online pass. This means you gotta dish out $60 for the game at launch to get that pass, or you better hope that used copy still has an unused online pass, buddy, or you're gonna be spending an extra $10 to play the cobbled together multiplayer mode that these games were required to have at the time. Seriously though, why the hell did something like Uncharted even have a multiplayer mode? Like yeah, these were kinda decently fun for the time, but god, let a game exist as a single player experience for Christ's sake. Not only were you looking for that little slip of paper for the online pass in your games, but a lot of times, and this is still the case today, you're hunting for another slip of paper with DLC codes on it. Oops, just kidding. The DLC code you've entered has been used already, bitch. Let me direct you to the store page for it. Whip out your wallet. This little detour is going to cost you another $20. This means that in a lot of cases, the disc that you spent $60 of your hard earned money on doesn't even contain a complete game. Now, you gotta go back to the Xbox or PlayStation Store and download the rest of your game for an additional charge. This set a precedent in console gaming that whenever you're buying a physical disc from your local store or, heaven forbid, even GameStop, you're essentially just buying an access key to download that game from your company storefront. And yes, this is still how the console gaming space operates today. Most games won't even contain a full build of the game, reducing the physical copy of that game to landfill once the servers for the system are shut down. But thankfully, this seems to be something that a lot of companies are actually actively doing the opposite of. A few notable examples in recent memory, Insomniac stated that with the release of Spider-Man 2, the full game will actually be fully on the disc and completely playable. Companies like Limited Run and Super Rare Games are keeping the physical gaming space alive, releasing a number of games that would not get physical release in a full, complete package. However, this would not come without its own series of drawbacks. Alright, so let's say that you just got a PlayStation 4 or even a PlayStation 5 for Christmas, and a hundred bucks to spend on games. You'd love to start building up a game collection. What's a series that you would like to collect for? How about uh, Jack and Daxter? That's a, a great, you know, staple PlayStation series. Well, I've got good news for you, friend. Almost every game in the series got beautiful remasters on the PS4, and this company called Limited Run Games published them all physically, so you can own your very own copies. All right, let's run over to Limited Run's website and buy some Jack and Daxter games. Oh, oh wait a minute. Uh, well, it looks like they're sold out on their website. That's all right. Why don't we check on E- Holy Christ! Collecting games on consoles now is a joke. Companies like Limited Run Games with their motto, Forever Physical, like to tout that they're doing a great thing for the gaming space giving these smaller developers the opportunity to release their game to a physical market where they will be preserved and enjoyed by gamers for years after the digital storefront that houses their games shut down. Unfortunately, this is a business model that is inherently flawed whenever you make these games limited releases. It makes no sense to me in my little pea brain why you would add an element of scarcity to a product whenever you want more consumers to enjoy said product. Especially if you want to stand on a soapbox and scream that you're doing it in the name of, quote, 
Preservation. Get the fuck out of town, buddy! What's worse is Limited Run Games isn't the only company to be doing this. Oh no no. Don't you know capitalism breeds innovation? Companies like I Am 8-Bit, Fangamer, East Asia Soft, Forever Limited, Super Rare Games, Strictly Limited Games, Special Reserve Games, Premium Edition Games, and many more are doing the exact same thing. Games being released in this way make them feel more of like a hype beast clothing drop than they do some pieces of art that anyone can own and experience. This is because a lot of times the people that are buying these games in droves aren't actually gamers at all. They're people looking to make a profit on selling these limited collector's items to other unsuspecting people or people who just want to complete a series that they love. And this is a perfect segue into the next topic that I'd like to talk about, resellers. Unfortunately, Limited Run and other limited release companies aren't the only ones making it hard for people who love and want to own these games to do so. Normal everyday people like you and I are also guilty. Most resellers are actively driving up the prices of games and taking advantage of people's nostalgia for easier times when they could plop down on their couch and, you know, play their Game Boy and they didn't have to stress about mortgages or, you know, light bills or car payments or anything of the sort. Now don't get me wrong, reselling at its core isn't harmful. You should be able to, as a private consumer, sell something that you paid hard-earned money for for close to or at market price. Where it becomes a problem is when companies like DK Oldies that pay next to nothing for an unsuspecting seller's items and turn around and throw them up for a 30 to 50% markup and sell them to an equally unsuspecting consumer just trying to get their grandson a birthday gift. This, in turn, makes these games' market prices skyrocket to astronomical numbers, making them virtually unattainable for gamers who just want to relive some memories, or for gamers who didn't have the chance to experience these wonderful games when they were readily available. Oh, what's that? You thought only modern console gaming sucked? Oh no no, friend. The retro market is no safe haven for you either. Sure, a lot of times when you buy a retro game, the complete and full experience will be present on that disc or cartridge. You won't have to deal with online passes or microtransactions. So what could possibly be the downside of retro gaming? Well, let's look at some examples, dear viewer. Let's use Silent Hill as an example. A titan of the survival horror genre praised for its atmosphere and deep, intensely emotional storytelling coupled with some of the most fun and engaging gameplay from a horror series. Let's see where it all started. Silent Hill on the original PlayStation. For this, we're gonna go back to our old friend eBay and uh, oh, oh, okay, okay. Well, well, good news. The Silent Hill games are mostly non-linear stories. So why don't you just start with Silent Hill 2 on the PS2? It's arguably a better game and, you know, a little bit more accessible. Oh, wait, never mind. Okay, okay, okay. What about Silent Hill 3? I, I can just start with Silent Hill 3, right? Nope, you can't have that one either, buddy. Resellers have made games like this out of reach for a lot of consumers. Thanks to huge retailers selling these games, a lot of times incomplete with just the disc, at insane markups to unsuspecting consumers, it drives the market price up because these games are actually selling at these prices. Then, of course, Jimmy Reseller can sell a nice complete copy on his eBay store for a, a measly 15% markup of an already insanely inflated market price. And before you run into the comments and say something like, Oh, Mr. Cicada Man, there's no way people are actually paying these insane prices for games. Let me introduce you to my good friend who recently fell victim to one of these guys whenever he wanted to get a copy of his childhood favorite Pokemon game. Right. So, uh, what, what game did you buy? So, I bought Pokemon Emerald. Yeah, how much did you pay? I paid $160 for it. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> was it, uh, I mean, was it worth it? That worth it to you? Personally, to me, since I wasn't in a bad way financially at the time, it was worth it to me. But 
if I was in a bad way, obviously, it wouldn't have been a good purchase. Yeah, I mean, somebody like charging that much for that game that retailed for like what forty, forty-five bucks originally. It's crazy. And even just a few years ago, it was only sixty dollars. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was still too much. But you can't really put a price on nostalgia for some people, and that was definitely the case for me. I, it was my favorite game of all time, so I was willing to pay that price. Now, wasn't that just an unfortunate story? You know, we could definitely look at the bright side of that. At least that copy of Pokemon Emerald that he bought can be preserved in its entirety forever. As long as the cartridge is well maintained and kept in a safe environment, the game will be around virtually forever. However, this is becoming something that is less and less guaranteed with modern games. Games are increasingly going digital only. Certain indie and lower budget games that don't get the opportunity to be published by something like Limited Run will unfortunately die out with the servers when they are inevitably shut down. Now, it's not just smaller games either. Just a few months ago, Alan Wake 2, a AAA sequel to what was originally one of the best 7th generation games, completely digital only. Not to mention you will also truly never be able to own a digital purchase. We saw this recently with Discovery and PlayStation having licensing issues and those items being pulled from your digital libraries even if you had them downloaded already. I just wanted to cut in real quick and upon doing research while editing this video, uh, I, it apparently it turns out the decision for with Discovery and PlayStation got reversed. So, uh, good news for people that owned Discovery content on their PlayStation. Hopefully this uh, becomes something that is going to consistently get reversed. Uh, but, you know, it probably won't be because that's just how the fucking landscape is nowadays. Okay, back to the video. And do I even need to mention what happened with PT? Now, the big console manufacturers, Sony and Microsoft, sell consoles completely missing a disk drive at all. Hell, PlayStation's now standard model of their system has a completely removable disk drive, meaning that there's a high possibility that whenever you go to buy one of these things on the used market, the disk drive just isn't there when originally it was sold with one. Alright, listen, you might be screaming at the top of your lungs at this point. Mr. Cicada, sir, this all sounds extremely bleak. I love console gaming, and collecting sounds so much fun. I want to know if there's anything that I can do. Fortunately, the gaming landscape is not all doom and gloom. There are just the most faint glimmers of light shining through this ever-present darkness. If you want to get into collecting now, there's plenty of systems with tons of great affordable games to be had. Two huge ones that I've been collecting for most recently, the original Xbox and the Xbox 360, have loads of quality and fun titles at dirt cheap prices. The best part of that, too, is some of these games are even backwards compatible on current Xbox systems, the Series X. Regardless, the Xbox 360 still looks and plays great for an almost 20 year old system. Also, it's not retro, but the 8th generation is also dirt cheap to collect for right now. You know, of course, these games will suffer some of the shit I've been bitching about until this point. You know, they're broken, they're unfinished, they're not fully on the disc. But some of the best games are actually fully, fully playable offline and straight from the disc. Just make sure if you're using a PS4, replace that little CMOS battery. Nintendo Switch is another system where the vast majority of the games that you're going to want to play are completely on the cartridge. You can rest assured that maybe 9 out of 10 times you buy something on this console, you're getting the full package and it'll actually be yours to own. And of course, if you want to completely circumvent the secondhand collecting market and just want to play some of the old games that you loved or maybe missed out on, there's always emulation. Emulation has come such a long way in the past 5 or 6 years, it's honestly insane. Almost any device that you probably already own probably has some sort of way to emulate games on it. Whether that be your PC, laptop, Mac, Android, or iPhone, the Xbox One, or even the Series S. Companies are even selling proprietary handhelds just for emulation. 
Now, in this video, I'm not going to go into the specifics on where you can obtain games to play on these things, but if you want to know more about emulating games or emulation in general, I recommend checking out Pariah695's video on the subject. It'll be linked in this video's description. Also, channels like Wolf Den and Blaine Locklayer have tons of videos going over different ways to emulate these games. So, in conclusion, with the current state of the console gaming market, not all is terrible. What matters most is people still have ways to play these wonderful works of art for years to come. And while not every way may be as accessible, modern technology has definitely helped get these things to as many people as possible. And sure, I might just be an old man yapping on about better times, but this is truly a subject that is really near and dear to me. I've been playing games for as long as I've been able to tell my left from my right, and it makes me sad to see the current state of the gaming market. However, with all that being said, I genuinely hope that you just go out there and enjoy these games. Alright, well that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you watched to the end, thank you so, so much for watching. It truly means a lot to me. Um, I did something a little bit different with this video. I actually like wrote a script and you know went off of it and didn't just talk a lot of times. I mean, there were a few times where I was just, you know, yapping and stuff, but truly... Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments. It would mean the world to me if you left a uh, subscribe, a like, you know, hit that little bell or whatever. Um, I want to keep making content like this, you know, these like longer kind of scripted videos. Um, still, like some unscripted stuff would be great. You know, I'm kind of just testing the water, seeing what sticks. But, you know, if you did enjoy this video, please, it would mean the world to me if you subbed, left a like, and hit that bell so we could boost this video, get it out there to other people who might enjoy it. Also, you know, share it with your friends or something like that. Uh, but yeah, thank you again so much, and have a wonderful day.